she had a mouth like a sailor. She was tiny and angry. Standing there behind the gas station counter, I hadn't completely understood what she was asking me. She says her boyfriend is a dick, and she dumped him so she could ask me out. There's a rave tonight. Can you pick me up? And can I drive your car? It's hot. I say, sure. We get there and her friend gets busted for selling ecstasy. We have to go bail her out. We sit in the police station, my face and hands going numb from panic after hours and hours of not knowing what's going on. She says, You can go now if you want. I've got a ride. I say, Okay. I leave. And even though I work a mile from her house over the next year, I never see her again. That's okay. I didn't know that was an option. She works with me, and in one of my feeble attempts to act straight, I ask her out. We date for a while. Movies, coffee houses. I tell her about Christ and about my panic attacks, and she's sweet. She asks me into her home after one of our dates. She shuts off the TV and puts her face close to mine, smiling. I guess. Okay. As if I'm diving into shark-infested waters, I put my face to hers, and I don't like it. Not at all. She keeps putting her tongue in my mouth. I push it back with mine. That's what I'm supposed to do, right? Our bodies are supposed to sort of communicate, and mine is saying stop. I don't know what it was. Maybe I was wincing? Maybe I was gagging? It means so much that I do this one thing, and just be straight. And I can't, I can't do it. I pull back and she asks what's wrong. I have to go, I have to go. Later, I tell my brother and my best friend that I didn't like it. They ask me why not, and I say, I just didn't. Dude, that girl wants you to play with her I didn't know that was an option. A few weeks later, she breaks up with me and joins the Air Force. I think she's married now with a few kids. She was a lesbian former Jehovah's Witness who rebelled against her religion, but was still a believer. She had moved in with my family when her home burned down. We did everything together. We talked about everything. We just hung out all the time. And yet, we hadn't spoke about the one thing that mattered most. I didn't know why it was so hard for me to tell her. She and I were driving to get cigarettes and beer, and I asked her if I could just tell her something. She said sure, and I told her that I was gay and began to sob uncontrollably. It just came out, and she encouraged me to understand that she couldn't see God being so angry with me for it. After all, he had made me that way. She made me notice that I had beauty inside me. I loved her for being there, and the drive back was possibly one of the most peaceful moments I had had in my life up until that point. Humans need closeness, even with friends. When our ability to articulate the whys and the hows aren't enough, sometimes you just need to scream the what. She asked me about the guys I liked, and for the first time in my life I was able to talk to someone about the feelings I had, about wanting to kiss other guys and about wanting more than they could give because I always wanted straight guys. This is the kind of confession that makes confessions to God seem so inadequate and so unsatisfying. I told her I could breathe again. I think I know who I am. Or maybe I don't. She's hazel-eyed and in a way I don't know what to make of her. I thought she was beautiful, but I didn't really have a sexual attraction to her. She was jovial, witty, and a complete punk. I did fall in love with her. I did. I know that sounds strange after everything else I've told you, dear listeners, but I guess it happens. We were nurses' aides, turning people left and right. We would talk about having to shower them, clean their shit, and get old, and watch them die. Being a CNA, you see a lot of things you wouldn't normally see. You become attached to these people. They become your friends. And then, then a few months later, you're doing post-mortem care on them. You see them go into the black. It's not something you ever forget. The elderly with their minds destroyed, trying to eke out their last moments of existence, if only they could remember where they left the wooden spoon. The one they used to spank their kids with in the woodshed? It's a job. It's a job where you make a little more than gas station and Walmart wages. 
I would talk to my co-workers about being Christian, but they ignored me and thought it was silly. The one person who would listen was her. My co-workers were a mixture of old and middle-aged mothers with thick mass accents. But her, she was a young mother of a three-year-old boy that had no father. Guy ran off. The fucktard hasn't showed up. Ever. I didn't know it at the time, but they would eventually be my responsibility and my reason for being. Turning Mrs. What's-Her-Name left and right, who couldn't hear, I tell Dana, I'm gay. She asks how I know. I just know. After that, she relentlessly pursues me for weeks until I decide to hang out with her. I didn't know what she wanted with me. I had never had a person so interested in me, especially not a beautiful woman. At least, not this way. Or at least, not that I had noticed? I guess? I didn't exactly know what she was looking for. A partner, a father for her kid, someone to talk to. Maybe all of these things. But in her relentless pursuit, she found someone who was very vulnerable, who could give her exactly what she wanted. And I was more than happy to oblige. How do you really know if you haven't slept with anyone? At the time... I thought she had a point, and a really good one. Now, remember, the reasoning here is coming from two people who are just barely out of their teens. Her point is moot compared to the knowledge I have now. I know that your sexuality isn't fully tied to who you have sex with. It's an intrinsic amalgam of numerous things such as upbringing, genetics, and the polyamorphous sexual nature of being male. Well, I guess... Up until this point, I had actually never slept with anyone. I had had experiences with both guys and girls, but I had never slept with anyone. So perhaps it was my desire to give everything a chance that I slept with her, thinking that the ability to do so meant that I had been telling people things about myself that weren't fully true. I mean, after all, I can't be gay if I have sex with her, right? So one night, bunny rabbits on the screen, rapping at the New World Order. He beats the first guy. We're watching Eight Mile. I don't know how it happened, but it happened. Where's your mind? It's not on Eminem. She's got you. Bunny Rabbit's second attack is interrupted by President Bush so eloquently telling us that we're going to war with Iraq because they have weapons of mass destruction. A few exasperated sighs later, we're laying there on her couch... Eminem says, fuck the new order. I'm confused. So confused. What just happened? A while goes by and I don't hear from her. She's calling in for work, and she ignores me when she does come in. When she finally does want to talk, she tells me that she's pregnant, and I'm spinning. The days thereafter are filled with conversations about what to do. I tell her I can't get married. I can't have a child. I am a child. Plus, I don't even know if I'm gay or straight or what. She tells me that if I don't know if I'm gay or straight, and that I'm not in love with her, and we can't get married, then she should abort it. I tell her if she does that, I won't ever talk to her again. Could you at least give me a ride to the clinic? I can't deal with what she's asking me to do. I am a Christian after all, and abortion is a huge no-no. After about a month more of conversation, we're sitting in the parking lot of the clinic. I don't want this. Across the parking lot, at the regulated distance, are a group of protesters with signs depicting meat grinder babies. Fucking sick. But they are my Christian kin, and they're reminding me that what I'm about to do is wrong. I know what I ought to, but I do not do it. The Apostle Paul ringing in my ears. I protest. If you do this, I will never talk to you again. This I promise. This I promise you, as if I'm reading straight from the Bible. She tells me to go fuck myself. She gets out of the car and walks in where men dare to tread. I'm crying. I leave. Where do you turn when your life is in the shitter? What would Jesus do?